Hi everyone, welcome back to the second episode in my little door series and if you haven't seen the first episode I highly recommend going to see that uh, where we explained how to make a proximity door so last episode you made a door that opened as soon as the player got near it and closed behind them uh, we're going to evolve that now into this episode and look at how to make an interactive door so a door that won't open unless you push a key on a keyboard or a button on a gamepad for example uh, so if I push E my door will open okay but if I push E away from the door it doesn't work okay so that's where we're going to now as I said I strongly recommend looking at the first episode uh, before this as a lot of the code is the same and I'm not going to go over it again here um, I'm just going to go over what's new and added to this time okay so to get started we're looking at the interactive door so as I said the code from the previous episode we'll still use so to make things a bit easier for, you, for us we're going to copy and paste the same actor we made before so go to your previous actor in the content browser right click and duplicate and you want to name this one door underscore button okay and now open it up so here's the code that we done last episode it should look familiar um, and I said I'm not going to go over this uh, in massive detail because I went over it in the previous episode just go and have a look at that and uh, get through that and then come back to this one so what we need to do is take the code that we've got here and split it okay because we've got the trigger event happening over here and then we've got the actual action of the door opening over here so we need to split this down the middle down here so to disconnect a pin in the blueprints you hold down the alt key which is next to your spacebar and click on the pin and it will disconnect the nodes from each other so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag select this and move it up a bit and move this to the side a little bit like that okay so as I said I need to put something in between here like a check to see whether or not we can actually open our door so this is the opening part this is the triggering part so this detects whether the players in range of the door and this is the door opening so what we're going to do is after we've done a cast of a first person character for both the begin and end overlap we're going to enable and disable inputs so what you do is you drag off the execute of the top cast of first person so this is when the player enters it begins overlap and you'll do enable input okay and for the end overlap you want disable input okay so what this does this enable and disable input does is essentially it tells the game that you want uh, all inputs that the player does on their keyboard or gamepad or whatever they're using uh, to now be uh, listenable by this actor so this actor will now listen out for inputs uh, from the player before that works though um, we have to determine which player controller it's referring to okay so you see both of these take a player controller and what I'm going to do is drag off the player controller and type in get player controller and this simply is a function that returns uh, the, pl the current player controller of the the first player the player index zero so this is the first player and that returns a controller reference which we can link up to enable input and we can also link it the exact same one up to the disable input so uh, that will work for both okay so that's the first step the next step is to do the actual keyboard input so this is another event okay so this is another thing that's going to trigger off this so if I right click over here and do keyboard E and choose the E key and link pressed to play on our timeline that we've done last episode and this will now work it won't shut the door yet because our reverse isn't hooked up so 
what we need to do is where we see disable input click and drag and link that to reverse so what will happen is if the player enters the trigger box it will check that it's actually the player it will enable the input of the player controller and that means that this event will now work if I walk out of the trigger area disable input will occur meaning that this won't work because it won't listen out for keyboard input anymore okay hope that makes a bit sense um, and what this uh, link up does with disable input to reverse is essentially when the player walks away from the door the door will stop opening wherever it is currently and start closing um, which is quite a neat little feature and that is it it is super simple to set this up okay and we can click compile and place it in our world and have a look so i'm just going to place it right at the start of my level here uh drag this out okay and click play and it should work so if i walk up to the door nothing opens until i push the e key when it does open walk away it closes and i can walk away midway through its opening and it will start closing automatically and that is it a super sweet simple uh tutorial not that long to do as i said once you've got proximity door done the button door is a lot more simple join us next episode where we work on the key card door which is a lot more complicated has a few more bits involved and but essentially what it does is it doesn't open with any inputs whatsoever until you collect the required key card which i've got going on here pick that up and now it'll open and the, what's cool about that is that key card is linked to that door so only that door will be opened by that key card okay so that's what we're doing next episode uh, if you like this tutorial uh, please like share subscribe all the rest of that and uh, see you next time hopefully for the third episode and final one of our door series thank you goodbye